Up next, the latest in fat. And we're talking good fat here. Now, those of you who have uh, tended to babies may have uh, you've heard the term brown fat. That's the name of a type of fat that keeps infants and babies warm. And rather than storing calories, brown fat actually burns calories and produces heat. And scientists have long thought that brown fat disappeared by the time these babies became adults. Turns out they were wrong. This week, researchers are reporting that they have found active brown fat in adult humans, and that fat might play a role in obesity and regulating glucose levels. Joining me now to talk more about this good fat is my guest, C. Ronald Kahn. He is the Iacocca Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and the Jocelyn Diabetes Center in Boston. Welcome back to Science Friday, Dr. Kahn. Uh, Thank you, Ira. How come we never knew about this stuff? Well, I think that people uh, had thought that brown fat, at least in adult humans, was only going to be present in some extraordinary circumstance. Uh, For example, it was known that people who had a disease of the adrenal glands, a tumor called pheochromocytoma, would have more brown fat. And people also knew that people working in the northern part of Finland and outside in the cold had some brown fat. But people thought this was the extraordinary, unusual example and that normal people didn't have it. But obviously our article and the other two that were in the New England Journal this week have uh, shown that that's not the case. Is the fat really brown-colored? It is indeed really brown-colored. You know, most of the fat in our body is white or slightly off-white and yellowish uh, because it's full of lipid. It's full of triglyceride uh, because that's where we store the energy from the food we eat. When we don't have access to food, we can burn up our fat. But brown fat doesn't have very much uh, stored lipid, not much triglyceride. Instead, it's filled up with uh, mitochondria. Mitochondria are those little parts of the cell that are important uh, for burning energy. So this fat burns energy rather than stores energy. Huh. And is that why we have it, so we make the energy from the fat? Well, the reason that uh, at least little babies have it and also some uh, rodents have it is that it's used to create warmth. So as it burns Uh, up energy, it actually creates warmth. As we get bigger, uh, it's less important in keeping warm. We have other ways to keep warm, like we shiver and we have uh, sort of some insulation by the white fat in our bodies. So I'm not sure that in adults its major reason is for warmth, but I do think it plays a big role in keeping this energy balance Mm -hmm. between storage and burning. So now that we've discovered that we have the brown fat, does does that mean that when we get really cold, uh, we can lose weight? Well, that's a great question, and of course, we don't know for sure the answer. What we do know is that people who are exposed to the cold for even two hours or when we did our study, people in the winter versus the summer have definitely uh, both more brown fat and more brown fat if it's in an active state. So I think one of the questions that we really need to look at is, could we take advantage of this as a way to kind of naturally stimulate this energy burning? Aren't you going to see people now outside with no jackets on after hearing this? <clears throat> well, maybe we will. Uh, <laughs> I, th- I, I think that uh, there may also be you know, some... Uh, genetic differences in how we respond to this cold treatment. But I think, of course, the, the thing about obesity is that it's, there's so many factors that contribute, you know, not only uh, how much we might burn through brown fat, but, of course, how much we eat and how much mm-hmm. we burn through exercise. Is there a way to tell how much an individual, you yourself, has have brown fat? The techniques that were used in the studies uh, in these three papers uh, are really pretty Uh, involved techniques, they would only be used in a really uh, major clinical setting. The the techniques are called PET-CT, and it's really the combination of two techniques. The one technique, CT, is computerized tomography, and that helps us tell the difference between fat and muscle and bone and other kinds of tissues. And the other technique, which is called PET, stands for positron emission tomography, really involves giving a kind of radioactive glucose tracer Mm. to see what tissues are most metabolically active. And when we do this, we say, well, if this fat is highly active, it's likely brown fat. And sure enough, when we biopsied it and when the other groups uh, biopsied it, it was brown fat. Let's go to the questions. Tony in St. Louis. Hi, Tony. Good day. Uh, Question about uh, are there differences in things like omega threes versus omega sixes as uh, there seems to be in other creatures like tilapia which 
farm raised or greater omega six and you mean in, in our in our own brand omega threes in our brown fat you mean we are stored there good good question dr Kahn. well uh, we don't know exactly how dietary fats will modify either the amount or the activity of brown fat uh, we do know that some of the radiologists who are trying to interpret these pet ct scans for cancer purposes uh find that the presence of brown fat kind of a distraction. It, it, mis, it misleads the diagnosis. And so they actually do give people sometimes a high-fat diet, which actually seems to turn down the activity of the brown fat. Mm -hmm. I would imagine then if, if, if brown fat causes you to lose calories, that you would find more of it in thinner people. Is that correct? That is correct. And that's exactly uh, what we found and actually what one of the other studies found. That is the people who have uh, lower BMIs, uh, tend to have the more functional active brown fat. Mm -hmm. and, so does, and, of course, people are going to say now, hey, how, what can I do to stimulate my body to make more brown fat? Right. And I think that uh, in addition to cold, which we've already talked about, mm -hmm. uh, I think that one of the things that uh, we now need to look at more carefully is are there other ways we can do this? We do know that... Uh, certain kinds of stress hormones uh, can increase the activity of brown fat, but of course, <clears throat> sometimes when you have stress hormones high, you don't feel so good because your uh, body's responding to the stress. I mean, we ourselves, and I know others as well, are looking at are there maybe certain kinds of growth factors that might stimulate brown fat, and we previously published uh, another research paper showing that there's a bone factor called BMP, which is used to stimulate different kinds of tissue growth, and, and mm -hmm. some of these may stimulate brown fat as well. Where would you find them? These growth factors? Yeah. Uh, right now, they, they are, well, they're, first of all, they're naturally in the body, but then the question is for therapeutic purposes whether you would actually need to give more or give it in a special way to maybe stimulate the brown fat. Mm -hmm. Now, we always talk about obesity, fat obesity, as related to glucose, as related to diabetes. Is there a connection here? Oh, definitely. Uh, first of all, there's the connection between obesity itself right. and type 2 diabetes, which, as you know, is very strong, uh, that people who are overweight and obese have a much higher uh, risk of diabetes uh, because their body becomes resistant to insulin. And uh, this is uh, what we call type 2 diabetes or what used to be called the adult onset form of diabetes. The connection with brown fat uh, is also there. We show in our study, for example, that people who have more brown fat, even if they're not diabetic, tend to have lower glucoses within the normal range, hmm. people who have less. So even within the normal range, this could be a modulator. Have we, uh, uh, have we found any place on the genome that makes brown fat that we would think about? Well, there are a, a number of genes that are involved in this program uh, to get brown fat. Actually, one of my colleagues here at Harvard, uh, Bruce Spiegelman, uh, has identified one of the major genes. It's a gene that goes by the name PRDM16, and uh, a few months ago, uh, uh, when we were looking at this bone morphogenetic protein, he was looking at BMP16, and he found that this is one gene that is somewhat of a, um, a master or partial master regulator for getting uh, tissues to become brown fat. So, hmm. we... Interesting. A uh, question from Second Life from Scott23 Hawker says, is brown fat as good as muscle at burning energy? That's a good question. Well, actually, in some ways, brown fat is better at burning energy. Uh, it's been estimated that if it's maximally stimulated with hormones that stimulate it, like the stress hormones, that as little as 50 grams of brown fat, that would be about two ounces of brown fat, could, in a thin person, burn up about 20% of their daily caloric intake. Mm -hmm. do, we, do, uh, do people taking certain kinds of drugs have less amount of brown fat? Yes. In our study, we found that one of the drugs uh, that affects at least, we don't know if it affects the amount or the activity, but it definitely decreases the amount of detectable active brown fat, is a class of drugs called beta blockers. Uh, these drugs uh, uh, are commonly used for the treatment of hypertension and heart disease, and they're very valuable drugs, so I wouldn't suggest that anybody stop the drug base. And they're widely used. And they're very widely yeah. used. But, uh, but indeed, it does uh, reduce the amount of active brown fat because the, the, it's blocking the effect of some of these stress hormones like epinephrine and norepinephrine on the fat. 
And it's actually been shown in clinical studies, uh, larger clinical studies, that people who are on these drugs often do actually gain a a kilogram or two that is about you know, two to four pounds. Yeah. But these are very important drugs, and I would not recommend anybody stop them on this basis, but they do affect its activity mm-hmm. for sure. Let's go to the phones. Ray in Reno. Hi, Ray. Uh, hi. Uh, good show. Thanks. Uh, need to know any relationship between the uh, high-density cholesterol and brown fat, and uh, is there any way you can increase that? Uh, I know it's genetic somehow, but is mm-hmm. there any, any way? Because I happen to have uh, low density cholesterol, very low, but also at the same time, a very low high density cholesterol. Right. And I need to raise that ratio. Yeah. So um, the kinds of cholesterol that you're talking about circulating in the blood, the LDL, low density cholesterol, and the HDL, high density cholesterol, those are mainly made uh, in the liver. And uh, we don't think that brown fat would have any direct way to control uh, the levels of LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, or the levels of HDL, which is generally regarded as the good cholesterol. But clearly people who are overweight, of course, are often uh, involved with what's called the metabolic syndrome, where in fact they have lower HDL cholesterol. One last question. Where do, you, where do you go from here now that you know this stuff about brown Well, fat? we're going in, in a couple of different uh, areas to follow up on this. Uh, one area is to see if there are other ways to detect brown fat that might be simpler, a little less invasive, less expensive, so that you wouldn't need to use radioactive isotopes. The second, if, of course, is to find out what we can do to stimulate either the amount or the activity of brown fat. Uh, and see if that really will be an important uh, adjunct to either prevention or treatment of obesity. Uh, We don't think you would need to stimulate it very much. We hope that even just a little stimulation might help change the balance and keep more of us thinner Mm -hmm. or help those who are overweight maybe keep those pounds off. Dr. Kahn, thank you for taking time to be with us today. Oh, thanks for having me, Aaron. Good luck to you, Dr. C. Ronald Kahn is the Iacocca Professor of Medicine at Harvard Med School and the Jocelyn Diabetes.